Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. This is the WoeCast with Joe Mizzy. Uh, I'm going to keep this short today. I've got two episodes coming out this week. More on that in a minute. First, a personal note about what happened with the Supreme Court this week. I've been really fortunate in my life to have had a number of people who've had a great impact on me who are part of the LGBT community. And it's really great to see some real progress towards them being accepted equally in this country. Uh, There's a lot to be done still, but I think this week was a great step forward and a great, great reason to celebrate. Uh, the Woe Apocalypse show is coming up really quick now. It's Saturday, July 13th. That's with PT's Revenge, The Miserables, Wrist Rocket, Cruise Italy, Do North, and Bottle Kids. And today you can get new music from both PT's Revenge and The Miserables. PT's Revenge has put together a new single titled Never Mind the Bullets. It's a great tune, and you're going to be able to download it for free from their Bandcamp page at ptsrevenge.bandcamp.com. It's also going to be the transition music in today's episode. I'll link to the download right from the blog post so you'll be able to get it there. Also today, I pushed pre-orders and digital downloads live for the new Miserables album, on our Bandcamp page. That's at themiserables.bandcamp.com or you can link it from themiserables.com from our Facebook page, from the blog post. It's going to be all over the place. Uh, the album comes out everywhere July 23rd, but on Bandcamp, you can get it early. You can pay what you want. You can even pay nothing. You don't have to give us an email address or anything. You can download the album and check it out. You can pre-order a CD. Those will ship around July 23rd. And let us know what you think. Even let others know what you think. Go applaud it. Go trash it on the pop punk message board or punk news, whatever you feel like doing. Um, really hope that you guys enjoy this album. So two episodes this week, I'm doing this for a few reasons. Uh, first we have a show on Wednesday with Buck from the infected. It's their last show. And I wanted to get his episode out before the show. So that's going to come out on Wednesday. Second, the miserables are also playing Friday along with Wednesday and there's the holiday, um, to be honest, I, I want to take this upcoming weekend off. I'm going to relax a little bit. Uh, so next week I'm going to take off. There's not going to be an episode next week, but, um, since bucks is coming out on Wednesday and today we have Jeff Dean, you guys will have more than enough to listen to for a couple of weeks here. Um, after we come back, we've got some really great guests lined up, um, and hopefully we're going to have um, even more with Riot Fest coming up. There's some people who have said that they're going to come sit down with me around Riot Fest um, a- as I schedule dates with them and, and you know actually get these recorded. I will start letting you guys know when they're going to come out. I don't want to give them away right now until I'm 100% confirmed on everybody, but it- I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, today's episode is with Jeff Dean. Um, I met Jeff doing string out uh, string tracks for an album here in Chicago, uh, something like 10 years ago now. And, and Jeff is a great dude, good friend, and Jeff's been in the thick of it for a good while. Um, so this was a great chat and I think everyone's going to enjoy it. So here it is. <laughs> Like close enough to the mic oh, and all I that can kind hear of you. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like I had Justin in here, and that was one of the things he didn't Who, want to fucking swear. Yeah, and he didn't want to wear the headphones. And so the problem is, in the audio, you can hear him keep doing this, and he just doesn't know that he was doing it. Right? And so he's like way back. Yeah, there. so like, oh, it, yeah, like at some points, it sounds like he's in a different room. Um, but he was cool, dude. He was cool. Um, so. The way I start these with everyone is, you know, just uh, how did Jeff Dean start playing music? How did I start playing music? <laughs> like what made me want to play music or yeah, when did God, I pick up a guitar? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Like like, what what was the childhood motivation for, for Jeff Dean getting into playing music? <laughs> um, I didn't start playing guitar until super late, man. I, I was 19 That's when, right. I, I, when I started playing guitar. Yeah. I was late, late to the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I was, I was super into Dag Nasty a lot. And I always thought it'd be kind of cool to play guitar like Brian Baker. Mm-hmm. And then I just never picked up one. And, you know, I had friends that played in bands in Vegas and shit. So it's like, you know, I'd go see their band practices. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. it'd be cool to play guitar. 
And then I went this one night, I saw this band Wax play. They played in the the record store in Vegas, like on a Sunday night at like midnight. And there, it was like 50 people crammed into this little yeah. teeny fucking punk record store. And Joe Sib, the singer, he was just going, I mean, they're like a pop band, yeah. basically, you know. But he was going off like he was in a hardcore band. He's like jumping <laughs> off the records and shit. And I just left that show and I was like, you know what? I got to start playing fucking music. I got to start playing guitar. So my friend Justin was in a band and I knew he had two guitars. And so I was just like, hey, dude, sell me one of your guitars. And he's like, yeah, all right. So he sold me this blue Ibanez for 150 bucks. And then I just locked myself in my room for a couple months, taught myself how to play. And then it was like six months later, I was playing in a band. Awesome. I don't know. I mean, I picked it up pretty quick, dude, right off the bat. But it's mm -hmm. like, it's always funny, like with progression, because it was like immediately, like I, I got it. And I started playing in a band, and then, like, I kind of hit this wall where nothing really progressed. Then it was, like, a year or so later, then, like, it kind of got better and better. Yeah. But, I don't know, I picked it up pretty quick, so. And so what were the first bands in Vegas? The first bands. Well, I, first, before the, we do that, the, the what the hell was it like growing up in Vegas? This is one of the things I want to hear about. You Fucking know, Devin... Who did our stuff? Yeah, spent some time in Vegas too, and her dad still lives out there. Well, it was funny. I find it fascinating people who live there. Well, it was funny because I was talking to her. I was like, "So you're from Vegas too?" She's like, "Yeah." yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, it's crazy." But like, yeah. we're like, we have a few years difference in our uh -huh. age, so we didn't really have like, like know any of the same people. But she yeah. knew like, you know, some of the sh the shit I was talking about. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's crazy there. Yeah, but it was. I mean, it was it was pretty awesome at the same time. Because at least back then when I first started going to shows and getting in the music and shit, there's no places to play. So people like people really wanted to fucking play music and people really wanted to go shows. And it meant so much to them that like we'd go through all kinds of extremes just to put shows on. I mean, like, you know, we'd do shows in the middle of the desert, drag a generator yeah. out into the middle of the fucking desert and have a show. There's these kidding. there's these fucking caves <laughs> that were like kind of by my mom's house. I mean, huge fucking caves up in the mountains. And we'd put a generator in one and then run the power into the other one and have shows in the caves. Wow. It was That's just, awesome. It was fucking, it, it was pretty fucking rad. That's serious DIY right yeah, there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, but I mean, you're dragging a generator out to power the PA. <laughs> but, but Vegas is <laughs> getting it, real. It's weird though, man, because like as far as like the music scene goes, because it always goes in like these five year cycles. It's like mm -hmm. really great scene, bands, everything's happening. And then everyone kind of gets to be over 21, and then they just don't put any forth any effort anymore. And then it just dies, and then there's nothing. Then, you know, like five years later, it'll start over again. Uh -huh. So it's, it's strange. So, but, so um, how, how, when did you live in Vegas till? Um, I was in college when I left. Uh-huh. So, and where did you go right after that? Is that uh, when you went to Detroit? Yeah. You went right to Detroit. Yeah. There, right? well, I, so, I left college to move to Detroit. To move to Detroit. Which, what, which you're how, one of the few people who's probably ever said that. Well, it was, it was funny because like. <laughs> now everybody is leaving Detroit from college. Well, I've ever was telling people I was moving to Detroit. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you thinking? But it was, you know, it's like I had I met, you know, Navarro yeah. when like my old band Tomorrow's Gone and the Suicide Machines played a show together in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is when they had like a cassette tape, you know. Yeah. It was like way before What was that called? Green something green, green Green World. Green World. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And um Jay and I hit it off, you know, and we became really good friends. And I had flown out to Detroit uh, I think it was like the summer of ninety five to like go hang out and just see shit. Mm -hmm. And it was fucking awesome in Detroit. There was all these fucking really cool bands. Well, and at that time, the music scene was, was off the charts. It was great. Yeah. And, I mean, people were doing stuff that, like, I hadn't seen before, you know? I mean, like, mm -hmm. as far as, like, playing-wise. And there was just all these shows and all these cool people. And Jay, is, he's like, yeah, dude, you should move to Detroit and we'll start a band. And I was just like, all right, fuck it. Awesome. So then I dropped out of college and moved to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> and that only lasted about a, eh, two years. <laughs> I was like, get me out of here. <laughs> So when you moved to Detroit, you started a band with Navarro, right? You guys, yeah. What was the name of the band? Cleon's, Cleon's Down. Down. Yeah. Okay. And what was that? I don't know if I've ever actually listened to that record. You guys had a record, right? Yeah. Like, we did. What did we do? We put there was a seven inch, and then we had a couple different comps. We were on. We were like on a, on a comp that was on Allied Records and stuff like that. I, and then you know, 
Benny was singing for the band Ben Force for a little bit. Like, what was Jay doing? Playing guitar. Playing guitar. Like originally when we started, it was Jay and I both playing guitar, and he was singing, and I was kind of yelling some shit. I don't know. It was, 90 the 90s man yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> it's a different time <laughs> but then it, it was funny because it's like i right as i moved to detroit suicide machines got signed yeah and i was like well hey dude i just quit <laughs> quit college and quit my band their whole well, I, thing I happened super yeah. quick though didn't it so well so then yeah. you know jay jay's like we'll just you know come on the road and be our guitar tech and then we'll just yeah. do the band when we're home so I was doing that, and then I was I only I was their guitar tech for a year, and then I just got I got sick of it. So we stay I stayed back, and then Benny was singing in the band, so that way we had a singer while Jay was gone. Mm-hmm. And it was a fun band. I don't know. It's kind of it kind of sounded like Fugazi a little bit, a little bit more screamy, but like almost like I don't know, like more like punk beats in it. I guess you know, like duck, 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 yeah, yeah, drum shit. And yeah, that was it was a super fun band, but. I just couldn't handle Detroit anymore. I had to leave. <laughs> yeah. Well, you all, you only lived there what two years? I mm-hmm. lived there for uh, twenty six years of my life. Yeah. So <laughs> I made it through twenty six, and then then I, I I bounced. You know, and it's like I only lived there two years, but it's like some of my best friends in the world are from there dude, now. It's I love like them, and mine too. And I I love the music scene out there. Yeah. Man, I mean, the music scene in Detroit is something that I think is really special, and like. At that time that you're talking about, like the the Suicide Machines era, that's when it was. That was like the height. That's when I was growing up. Yeah. I mean, that was me. You know, I was. I would have been what? That was '96. Yeah. They got signed. So you know, I'm I'm 17 years old at that point, and that's when I was first starting to play in bands yeah. too. Like I was just getting. I was a little bit late on actually taking guitar seriously. I'd picked up a guitar <laughs> when I was younger because my dad played, but then I well, played. You, t- you take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> um, so uh, I, uh, you know, that's that's really what I kind of bloomed in terms of playing. And, and that music was what got to me was was all the Suicide Machine stuff. And like the whole punk ska movement there was pretty cool at that time. But th- there was all kinds of other shit happening. Like There's all tons. those bands, like Current and like R- Jay's other band, Roosevelt's Inaugural Parade. Like all those bands. Like but we we used to have shows out there that would have all those different yeah. bands on them. It was too. awesome. Like was- at, we used to go to Pharaoh's. I don't know if you yeah, remember I- Pharaoh's. Dude, I played dude, Pharaoh's but- way too many times. <laughs> but it's like you'd have a show there. That, like every band would be a different genre. Yeah. There was no similarity between them whatsoever. Well, so that's that was the charm of everything. That's yeah. what made me want to move there. Yeah. It was it was awesome. Yeah. But then it just. It's Detroit, man. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll it'll wear you down. It, it, that's for sure. It'll, especially, if, you know, it will be, do its hardest to wear you down. Well, especially being from the West Coast too. You know, it's like a completely that's a pretty different drastic change. Yeah, yeah. climate I mean, wise, climate plus just like people, just, just and, pace of things too. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like everything tends to be a lot more, move at a slower pace from where I was from. <laughs> <laughs> well, Detroit, people weren't people weren't as angry. <laughs> I think there are a lot of angry people. I think they were just uh, – I don't know how to explain it. it. Just exerted it differently. Although, see, the 90s were a pretty good time in yeah. Detroit. The 90s were – you know, auto industry was doing good, so everybody was doing halfway decent in the yeah. city, you know? Um so, yeah, it was a lot different time than it is now. That's for damn sure. But I still love going to shows in Detroit. Man. I, like, I still love go. I go back to Detroit dude, you were, all, you were the, all the, the time. You were at the 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 Black Christmas thing and freaking the break anchor set. Yeah, was insane. So you never see that anywhere. <laughs> it was so intense. It a was, Christmas tree got torn apart. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> everyone was crowd surfing. I just the remember the I was standing tree. outside and you were against the window. And I, you're just looking at me like, what the hell is going on in here? Because yeah, I couldn't get in to the <laughs> to the show because they they wouldn't even let me go into the break anchor show. I'm like, oh was, my god, that was a fun show, man. Yeah, that, that was a was good awesome. that was a good night. That that turned out to be a great night. I mean, I think it was executed really well. Ramona did a really nice job with the whole thing, considering the scale of what was put yeah. together. So, um, uh, so. You do you do Cleons down. You do Detroit for a little while. Where did you go after that? And then I, I went back to Vegas. Well, my my first band, like the hardcore band I used to play in, Tomorrow's Gone. Even though I moved to Detroit, like we were still doing it. Like I'd go back on yeah. holidays. We'd play shows and stuff like that. And 
we ended up putting out a seven inch on Element Records. I think it was summer of ninety seven was when it was coming out. And so I'd booked like a whole fucking US tour. Like mm-hmm. I mean, you know, this is like book your own life era shit where you like call You're still doing it almost. I, pretty much. <laughs> We're going to get to that. But, but you know what I mean? It would be like, okay, you call some random dude. He'd be like, no, I can't, I can't help you, but here, call this guy. Yeah. You know? So it's like I, I booked a whole sum, uh, summer tour for us, and I was just like, you know what? I'm done with Detroit. I'm moving back. I'm going to do Tomorrow's Gone full time. And the day I moved back, which was two days before the first show of our tour – Band broke up. Oh, jeez. So I just, I had just, I had just <laughs> dropped everything in Detroit to move back to Vegas to play in Tomorrow's Gone full time, and the band broke up. Oh man! And I was just, I didn't even know what I was gonna do. I was just like, <laughs> destroyed. Yeah. But then I, I actually, it was, it worked out well though because my friend Mike, who had played bass in Tomorrow's Gone, he wasn't the bass player at the time, but he'd been in it for a bit. And then my other friend Mike, who was in the band for a bit as well. They weren't doing anything, and I was just like, all right, I got to start a new band. That's why I moved back here. So it was like, seriously, like the next day, I called up Mike and Mike. I'm like, you want to do a new band? They're like, yep, absolutely. And then I had started writing like a bunch of songs when I was in Detroit. Kind of not like they, they were different than what Tomorrow's Gone was doing. I mean, there was like fast beats and stuff, but it was, you know, a little bit more intricate songwriting and stuff. And I was like, all right, I got I already got enough songs for a new band, dude. Let's do this. And fucking a week later, we played a show with nice. with, <laughs> with King for Day and, and Kindles. Wow. In in Vegas. Well, wow, that's pretty. Like cool. within a week, I had a new band. So it was, it was, it was that was cool. It was an exciting time. So I'm I'm trying to remember. <laughs> You've been in so many fucking bands, dude. Like, Tell me about it. I can't remember the names of all of them at this point. My brain so, hurts. So. Uh, uh, was that the first band that kind of like took off a little bit? The- yeah, that band was called Zero and Trust. We were okay. only, we were only like I, we were only a band like less than a year. Okay, but it was like you know I I, I was always the guy in the band, and I, I mean I, I guess I'm still kind of the same. Like you know it's like you meet people on the road, you become friends with people and stuff. But I was always the one that like stayed in touch with everybody, you yeah. know. So it's like I'd made like over the couple of years I'd made like this, this you know all these connections. So it's like, once I had this band, it was like, all right, you know, and everybody who was playing in the band was a hundred percent on board. Mm-hmm. So it was like, immediately it was, it was like, we played that show with King for day and, and Kindles. Next show was, was Zoinks. Then it was, then we started doing some stuff around Vegas, played Arizona. And then we flew to New York to record a record. And we played with hot water music and saves Holy a day. God. It was like, dude, the band was like on. Yeah. It's like, I, and, Especially at that time, you're playing with Hot Water and Saves a Day and, and King for a Day and all that yeah. stuff. That's intense, dude. Yeah. It was yeah. fucking awesome, what, man. What years is this? That was 1998. Okay. And then I got this offer to go on tour to be a production office manager for this this singer guy. But it was like you know a month-long tour of Spain and like rid- ridiculous amount of money. I mean, probably the most money I ever made in my life was yeah. on that tour. And so I couldn't say no to you know, that doing this, but I was like, all right, you know, you know, we'll pick everything up when I get back from this tour. And I came back and Mike, the drummer, he'd quit. He was just like, I, I don't, I don't even remember why something stupid. Yeah. But, you know, especially at that time in Vegas, I mean, Mike's still one of the best drummers I've, I've ever known. And just, there was nobody that could replace him. And plus he like, you know, we had, we had a female singer, but he did backups too. So they kind of both sang. So there was no re- way to replace him. So it was just like, Oh, well, all right. I guess that's done. <laughs> but then it was like the same thing happened. It's like I got back to Vegas and I was like, yeah, this isn't my place anymore. I got to get out of here. So I think after the band broke up, it was like a month later, I moved to Chicago. So you moved to Chicago before 2000 then? Oh, yeah. I moved here July 13th, 1998. Okay. So you were already here for a few years before I met you the mm. first time then. Okay. Yeah. So for anyone actually listening to this, <laughs> the way Jeff Dean and I met was through a ill-fated record yeah, that's very <laughs> that true. I did string parts on, I played violin on. Um, at, where well, was the, by the way. What's that? Yeah. Well. Where, where was the studio? We, oh. we haven't done strings on any of our stuff yet. We got to break out the skills, that, dude. dude. It's right over there. Dude, I have <laughs> my violin. My mom would hate hearing this, but I haven't picked it up recently. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, yeah. That's not good. No, I need to keep the chops up. Dude. <laughs> I need to keep the chops up. Um, anyway, so 
Where was that studio? That's I'm trying it, to remember. It was Rax Tracks. It's on, it's just up the street, Belmont and Greenfield or Greenview or something. It's like uh-huh. Belmont and Ashland, basically. Okay, that's right. Because I remember there was a bar. Was Sheffield's the bar across the street or what? What was the Where bar did we across go? the street? I can't remember. Okay. Because I, I remember I don't think it was that Sheffield. girl that played cello. Yeah. I took her to the bar across the street, and it turned out she was underage. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know, and they didn't check her ID. And then she told me, like, oh, I'm only 19 or something like that. I was like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> like, I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh so yeah, so you, when you moved to Chicago, is that what you started doing? Is that when you started getting into engineering? Or no, no. Was... I when I moved to Chicago, um, I was just working, and then Chris and Darren from Roosevelt's and King mm-hmm. for a Day were living out here, and so then when King for a Day broke up, Chris and I started Story So Far. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it was like it's me and Chris and Ron who played in Queens Down, but Ron didn't last as the drummer, so then Mikey Defour. From King for a Day and Roosevelt oh, the, was the I drummer. Didn't. See, I don't know much about that ba- that particular band. Yeah, and then Darren moved out from Detroit and played second guitar oh, at Story right. So Far. He did. That's and then right. I had I, and then I had met Dennis from when Eighty Eight Fingers played in. What other Vegas. band was Mikey Dufour in? Uh, what besides King for a Day and Roosevelt? King, just King for a Day and Roosevelt's, right? I feel like he was in something, Maybe. or is he in something now? Or I don't think he's playing no. drums anymore. Mm-hmm. I heard his name recently with something, but maybe it was just that. Yeah. It might have been so. No, but I, I'd met Dennis uh, when 88 Fingers Louie played in Vegas just briefly. And then I ran into him like right when I moved to Chicago. We ran into each other at Fireside or something. And so Chris and I had started jamming, and Dennis came back from an 88 tour and he had quit. And then I was like, well, got this new thing I'm working on. And then it was like Dennis was in. So that's kind of how that band started. Cool. And you guys, you guys were what record label were you on? We we're on Hopeless. Hopeless, right? Yeah. Okay, that's I think where I remember hearing about that band for the first time because the Common Rider record we did was yeah. on Hopeless too. So, and we did we did uh, I can't remember the kid's name that was out in uh, out with us on on tour on the West Coast, but he brought you guys up okay. when we were when we were on the road, and that would have been two thousand two. So that's about the right time, right? We broke up in. I think it was like October 2002. Yeah. Okay. So you guys had already like done your stuff. So yeah, yeah. that's probably what it was. You guys had broken up like right before we went out on the road. Yeah. So that's probably what the, the discussion was about. That's probably why I heard about it. So, and then, so what happened after that, Ben? Um, that was a crazy year. Cause it was like, it was like, and then the, <laughs> the trail of Jeff Dean and 8,000 bands begins. It just, <laughs> how, how many bands is that already? I, forget, I, don't I feel like I lost know. count already. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, well, that was, that was a weird time because it was Story So Far had broken up. I had just left my wife, and it was like, okay, so I have no band and I have no relationship anymore. <laughs> Everything was kind of. That's a big change. Yeah, it, it was a pretty crazy couple months there but yeah. then um i ended up joining the bomb like right like like probably like a month after story so far broke up um paul the guy who played drums at the time called me up and asked me if i wanted to be their new guitar player and you know i'd known those dudes like loosely because story so far i played a couple shows mm-hmm. and stuff and i had other encounters with Pizzotti along the way so we we knew each other a little bit but not like well or anything mm-hmm. but you know, I, at the time, it, it, you know, I mean, all the early bomb stuff before I played in the band, I mean, it's cool and everything, but it wasn't really my cup of tea, you know? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't know about this. But I went and jammed with them anyways, and it went well, and they wanted me, and they wanted me to play. And I kind of was like, well, look, dude, you know, I put pulled Jeff aside, and I was just like, look, you know, if I'm going to play guitar in this band, I want, some shit needs to change, you know? I'm like... Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna start writing some 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 tunes, and you know, let's let's try to revamp this thing because I just feel like that band got like a negative rap like right out the gate for some reason, you know. And Jeff was super cool with, about it. He's like, "Yeah, dude, go for it." So I kind of just, just took the reins and just started writing tunes. Who all was in the bomb other than than you and Pizzotti at that point? Um, uh, this guy Steve and this guy Paul. Okay. And then they they quit. It was like I probably like. I don't even think I'd have been in the band a year, like when they quit. 
like maybe maybe it was maybe a year and then i got we had a show i think we had a show with seven seconds in detroit that we were we were supposed to play and so i asked pete and susie because pete and i were living together at the yep. time and i asked them if they wanted to if they could fill in for this show they were and they did and the show just went really really well and they were both like yeah you know what we just want to do the band let's just do it That's and awesome it's yeah, been, I was uh, just talking to Pete. That's the Pete I was yeah. hanging out with earlier. You probably put that together, but yeah, I, 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 I figured. <laughs> no, but it's. I mean, the band's been the same since. That was and that was ten years ago. Now you know it's been me, Pete, Mike, and Pizzotti ever since. And you guys are playing still. Yep. You guys just did a show in Blue Island recently, didn't you? Yeah. Or something. How was that? Mm, it was fun. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's all you got to say. About <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right. So bomb starts. You do. You you start the bomb. What's after bomb? What what is the next Jeff Dean? Let's not. We're probably not going to hit all of them. Let's be <laughs> honest about that. But. Well, I I started I started doing four star alarm like pretty soon, or I started trying to put it together pretty soon after that because I'd already started writing like songs for a new band before before I joined the bomb, and I told mm-hmm. Jeff I was like, look. I'm going to do this other thing that I'm working on, you know, and he was cool with it. So it took me a good couple of years to get that band going. Cause it, I, I, I was sick of playing with all the same people. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to meet some random people that, that I don't know. And we'll see how it goes because, you know, when you're friends with people, it's like, Oh, people show up to practice cause they're bros or people get lazy. And I was like, you know, yeah. I want to be in a band with people that the only reason they're there is because they want to be in a fucking band. Yeah. You know? And so that's what I did. And I, that band was awesome. I mean, it didn't last long. I mean, I don't know. I guess we were together probably three years and, you know, we put out an EP and an album and a seven inch. And I think we did a comp or we did, yeah, we did a song and a seaweed tribute, but that, that four star alarm, the album, I think it's probably, that's still probably my favorite record I've ever written. Really? Yeah, I mean, from a musical standpoint, that record fucking rules. So, is it available online for? Music yeah, it's it's on uh, Solidarity. Okay. Records. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, that you know, I don't know that that when that band broke up, that was a pretty tough one because it was like we had really like hit it hard with that band. You know, we did mm-hmm. multiple multiple tours and the fest and played like a lot. I mean, we really put a lot of work into that band. You know what I mean? You know, we toured the West Coast with Sam I Am and stuff. It was like so. That's I got, where you got in touch with Sam I Am. Well, I, I I I met those dudes because they were on Hopeless the same time Story So Far was, and so we had done a couple shows with them. You know, and then Sergi and I had hit it off pretty like immediately. So we were just kind of friends ever since then. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was man. I put a lot of work in Four Star Alarm, dude. It was like <laughs> you know, but. It was, it was a good, you know, I learned a lot from it because it was like, okay, you know, you know, I mean, and we all ended up becoming friends. You know, I wasn't friends with any of these guys, you know, when we started the band. Like, I didn't know How them. How did you guys all connect? Um, Let's see. Uh, Mike, the original drummer, I met, like, on Craigslist. And I've... Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Ted, the singer, I met on on MySpace. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, well, because you remember they, they used to have a classified section on there. Yeah, like, yeah, I like, remember that. And it was like, so I was, I was like, all right, fuck it, you know. And yeah. I, but it was, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. But then, my, you know, but then Mike ended up moving to LA, and then Eric from Strike Anywhere ended up being the drummer in Four Star Alarm. And yeah. I'd, I'd known Eric obviously prior to being the band, so it was, you know, he was a bro. And then uh, Greg from Horse Pinker was the bass player, and I met I met Greg because he was in the Reputation with Elizabeth, and so like I get it Elizabeth who Elmore I okay from Sarge and stuff. So I ended up actually Andy from the studio had recorded the Reputation, and he's like, hey, I th-, you know, and they had broken up, and he's like, yeah, I think that dude that plays bass in that band would be good for for Star Alarm, and I'm mm-hmm. like. All right. Man. So you were already working at Million Yen then, or no, no, we I recorded. I mean, I wasn't engineering there, okay. but like we uh, the first four star alarm EP we did in Toronto with John, and then everything else we recorded. We did you do that signal to noise then? Uh, we still? did it at Halla Music because okay. at the time John was working out of there and a signal to noise. Okay. But um, everything else that four star did, we we recorded all of it at Million Yen. So. Okay. That's kind of how like Andy and I ended up becoming like good b- friends and stuff, and how what led to me working out of there. Yeah, 
So, okay, so four-star alarm happens. That's done. Still in bomb. Still in the bomb. Still in the bomb. Um, What's next? Um, well, I ended up doing playing this band called Certain People I Know and then Noise by Numbers, which both of those bands kind of started at the same time. Okay. More or less. What, so, when did Noise by Numbers start? Anyway, this is something two, I, I had Dan in here. 2009, Nine? I think. Well, okay. that's when the album... You know what? Dan and I started like writing songs like... I think like 2008, like this, the winter of 2008. Cause I remember you guys were just getting going when I first was like, Oh, I think I'm going to start playing a, in a band again. <laughs> and yeah. then I remember hearing like, Oh yeah, Jimmy is playing with this band in Chicago. <laughs> and I was like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. What happened? Like I've been gone for that long that a dude is like, like I know, <laughs> I know all these dudes in a band together in Chicago and I just was oblivious to it until I heard this. Like you can't escape Detroit, man. I know. <laughs> I was you, like, you what's can't. going on? Um, but, uh, so you guys started in 2009 then. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I started, and I'm interested in this. I, I didn't get to talk to Dan about noise by numbers at all. So, and I don't know your guys' history of how the whole thing started. I can imagine where, where did you know Jimmy from? I knew Jimmy just, just from, from playing Det- in Detroit. Yeah. Right? Just from yeah. Detroit pros. Yeah. And, and Jimmy actually, the last tour that Four Star Alarm played, um, he played drums for us okay. on that tour because Strike Anywhere was out and Eric couldn't do it. So yep. Jimmy ended up playing drums for us on that last tour. And Jimmy and I was were always bros, and he's just like, oh, he's dude, awesome, we got to play in a band together, yeah. man. So when we, the, fir- the first drummer in Noiseman Numbers was Neil Hennessy. Okay. But he just recorded the album, and we played one show with Neil. But he, you know, he had other shit he was working on. He just didn't have time, and so it was like, "All right, I know who's going to play drums for this band. Yeah. It's got to be Jimmy." Nice. And it was, of course, you know, Jimmy comes out and kills it because he's a badass, and then, yeah. you know, he's funny as shit. So it was like, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, this I is our guy." Him fucking bush dive naked into a bush in Detroit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even bleeding. want to tell you. The, I don't want to even tell you that some of the questionable shit I've seen that dude do. Oh my god! Oh my god! We used to go because I played in in. Uh, frequency five for a hot yeah. minute um i don't even know if i ever even played a show with them i don't think i did like it just didn't work out i yeah. was not i was after common rider and i just was like not in a good place to be in a band in that point in my life anyway yeah. um but uh yeah i used to hang out downtown with those dudes all the time and it was a riot man but we had frequency five practice once and and it was when the blackout happened <laughs> the east coast blackout and i'm on my way to practice and the as I'm on my way to practice on I-96, like traffic just comes to a halt. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And like, so I switched. <laughs> I was driving my like shitty old Saturn I used to drive and I turn on, I turn on the radio. No radio. Yeah. No nothing. Like everything's out. And I finally get downtown. I don't know if you were ever at that practice space in Detroit. I, I remember because everybody seemingly practiced there, but like I, yeah. I never went there. I get there and it's kind of in a shitty part of town. Yeah. And uh, I get there. Nobody is there. <laughs> like not a soul. And so I'm sitting there going, dude, I don't want to be here for that long. And like right as I'm about to pull away, Ray pulls up. Ray Moses pulls up. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, dude. uh like like the there's a blackout and I'm like what do you mean and he's like <laughs> like the whole like eastern seaboard has no power and I'm like what the hell are you talking about at this point traffic is so bad I'm not going anywhere <laughs> and I ended up spending the night yeah. at their place in downtown Detroit which just turned into like downtown Detroit turned into like a freaking street party oh I'm the sure the whole dude. city like we bought the last case of beer that they had <laughs> at the the liquor store across the street from the practice space like everybody was just buying That's up awesome. all the beer in town but uh anyway sorry side point but um <laughs> so you guys you guys had Jimmy how did you guys how did Dan end up doing that how did that work well, out well you know i mean Dan and i like we had always talked about doing a band together it's funny cuz um when Pete and i were living together it was probably it they had just i think Pete and Susie had just started playing in the bomb and the methadones were still going yeah. on and this one day, like Dan and I were just hanging out and we start playing guitar and all these ideas just started happening super quick. And we both got kind of freaked out. We're like, whoa, dude, like you, it's like, all right, you and I could really do something here. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously we got like some kind of musical connection, but we were both like, well, he's got the methadones. I got the bomb. It's like, let's not go down that path, yeah. you know? And then it was like fall 2008. You know, like, I don't know if I had a job. I know Dan didn't have a job either. And so we just started hanging out and have just and just playing music and writing tunes. So, like, 
Dan used to come over. We'd come over to my house. We'd get a 12 pack and just write tunes in my living room. It was fucking awesome. You know, yeah. it was like, and then it was like immediately we had like, you know, pretty much like, most of that first album, like, what's the written. songwriting process for like that? Because like Dan um, obviously is probably very like at least, and I didn't ask him this when he was here, but I feel like he's probably pretty melody driven. Um, usually, I would come, I'd have an idea for like a song, I'm like, oh, hey, check this out, riff, like a riff, yeah, yeah, and then him and I would just structure it out, and then Dan would write the vocals. Got it. Okay, but. It was, you know, it was a lot of fun writing music in that band. Like we that 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 whole beginning part when we started putting it together was a lot of fun. It was really creative too. It was like I don't know, it was just a good time, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, I I remember you guys practice at that that sound space. Yeah, place. <laughs> I remember I run into you guys and yeah. I ran into Jimmy. That was the first time I think I'd seen him. <laughs> Since I moved here, yeah, and like you guys are outside unloading your gear, and I'm just like, what the hell are you guys doing here? And then you guys named the album over Levitt. Well, that's 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 the second record, <laughs> the second record yeah. because of I'm assuming because, because of the of practice the space. practice space being off of Levitt. So yeah, um, so you guys did two albums, right? Two albums, three seven inches. Yeah, three seven inches. Yeah, okay. there's a. There's a there's those. there's a one on the art of the underground. There's a split with cheap girls, and then there's the split with the magnificent. Okay, I know the magnificent one, and I didn't know about the one with cheap girls. I yeah, it's we, it, it's we both do a cover. I think they do Bill and Sebastian. And we do the Jesus and Mary Chain cover. Okay. All right, so you got let's keep it all together. You got <laughs> you got noise by numbers. You got the bomb. Um, when does All Eyes West come into play? Um, that was two thousand summer two thousand ten. We okay. started playing. And what was the impetus for that? Uh, Rick Rick Fast, uh, him and I had known each other for years, and he he con- he called me. He's like, he want to do a punk project, and <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I was like, and we, you know, I'm thinking, all right, well, like social distortion or something, you know, like uh-huh. punk project yeah, yeah, in yeah. my mind, you know. Yeah. And so he's like, you know, I, I got the, my friend Justin. He's a good bass player and singer. I'm going to try to get him, you know, to come jam with us. Let's let's get together. So we get together and start playing. And for some reason, like, everything kind of just started sounding like like mid-'90s, like Fugazi, yeah. seaweed stuff, yeah. you know? No, like – intentional that's just how it kind of started sounding when we were start- everybody i hear describe all eyes west says it's a cross between fugazi and the early foo fighters that's i'll, a I'll comparison. take that that's a comparison <laughs> i'm serious like every time i hear somebody describe you guys that's what i get and i think it that's makes rad. sense that's right like the, the vocal <laughs> patterns i think are are a little bit dave groley a little bit not it, not a lot i mean i but guess the I, guitar riffs like you write i guess i can see like some fugazi-ish. similarities and like in like certain qualities in Justin's voice and Dave Grohl's voice, but like I really don't get the comparison that much. It's I think like, it's the mesh, the okay. mesh of like because I mean, the early Foo Fighter stuff too. Like yeah. those guitar riffs were not like the new Foo Fighters. No, stuff, I mean right? it was there were riffs. Fucking rad. Like they were yeah, they, they, those early Foo Fighters records had awesome fucking guitar riffs. So yeah. like you guys have that, like you have that riffy thing, but you still have a melodic vocal line on yeah. top of it is what you've got going on. So so you guys. You guys started, and then how did he get to be where it is now? We, Which, you know, aside from having like eight different drummers play with you guys at any yeah. time, <laughs> well, I've, Justin, Justin, and I hit it off right off the bat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like when we we just started when we started working on songs together. They re- like it just really came. Everything came together really well, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we play we played our first show, and it went great. I don't know what it is about that band, but it, it's like. You know, it's like I think about like like four star alarm. How I put like three years of my life into that. Like it worked so fucking hard, and it never really just hit where I thought it should have went. And it was like right off the bat with All Eyes West, like first show. Everyone's like, "Fuck, it's awesome," you yeah. know. And I remember my wife was like, right after the first show, she's like, "Dude, this is the band." And I'm like, "Really?" She's like, "Yeah, this is this is it. This is the one." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Huh?" So then I talk to I go to Justin, and I'm like. So what do you think, dude? What do you want to do with this? And I'm like, is this just some hobby or do you want to go for it? And he's like, I want to go for it. And I'm like, then, all right, then I'm all in. Yep. And I was like, I'm putting everything I have into this band then. Because, you know, it's like, 
Justin and I are, are good friends and to have like the singer, you know, he sings and plays bass. Yeah. And just I don't know, to have it to be the two of us like that where I can trust him and I can rely on him and we go into everything no matter what, you know. I was like, all right, this is what I've been waiting for, you know, because there's yeah. always there's always one person in a band that fucks shit up. There's oh, one person. Constantly. It's like you get to this point and there's always the one dude that's just not as committed as everybody else. Yeah. And that's usually the singer, you know, and it's like, I don't have to worry about that this time because I know this dude is in it with me, you know. Yeah. So it was immediately like immediately I was like, all right, just started booking tours and stuff. And, you know, we, we played I think we played like three shows and then we went to the studio to record and it was just going to be demos. I mean, what, what it ended up being, the, it ended up being the first album, but it was like, I mean, we did everything in four days. It was like drums and bass one day, guitar one day, vocals one day, mixed in one day, just super fucking quick, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that record sounds rad, but it was like never intended to be like the album, you know, it's yeah. like, all right, let's, let's get our songs down, see how they sound. So then, I sent the demo. I sent my demo. We're going through the same thing right now. Yeah. So it's like we started the same way. I was like, we're going to demo everything. And then we got done with it. And we're like, yeah, it's good to release. <laughs> like, we're like, well, all right. You I, know? I sent everything to some, you know, to a couple friends of mine. And my friend Matt in New York is just like, dude, what the fuck is this band? I'm like, oh, it's this new thing I'm doing. He's like, this is fucking awesome. I already know somebody wants to put it out. I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, we played like three shows. Mm -hmm. And and this label Academy Fight Song out of New York, they're like, yeah, we want to put it out, you know. Awesome. And then they had put out like Walter Schreifels' fucking solo record and like all kinds of shit. And I was like, wow, all right, I guess this is happening. I mean, we ended up not releasing it on that label because of some shit that went down. But you know, Jumpstart came in immediately, and they're like, we want the record. And so I was like, all right, well, there's obviously something happening in here. Mm -hmm. So. Well, well you live the the Jumpstart Records requirements for submitting a demo better than any <laughs> musician I know because they have that thing on their website, and I've looked at it, dude, um, and it's like they list all this stuff. Like, if you do not do any of these things, don't bother pretty much, <laughs> and one of them is like – if you're not playing at least a hundred shows of a year, don't talk to us. <laughs> like, it makes sense. Like, you yeah, know? yeah. Well, dude, if you're a record label, and I've learned this through my own stuff, dude. Yeah. If bands aren't playing shows, the records don't sell. That's what happens. So, yeah. You know. Um. So you guys in All Eyes West, obviously, you tour relentlessly. This is one of the things that I definitely want to talk about. Like, you guys are on the road months out of the year yeah pretty much at this well, point the last right? the last two years have been pretty pretty crazy aggressive yeah like, uh, almost all the time when i talk to you you're like oh i'm going on the road tomorrow yeah <laughs> or something like that like even when we were putting this together yeah. i was like oh when's jeff dean gonna be in chicago <laughs> that's the question well i mean i love playing man i love touring and i love seeing the world and you know maybe you know maybe it's an outdated concept but the only way i've ever known to make your band successful is the tour as much as you can yeah you know it's like play as many shows as you can as as many places as you can mm -hmm. that's the only way i know how to do it yeah you know I think, that, I think that's how you're that's how you should do it man well you gotta you play know? dude why are you in a band if you're not gonna play exactly shows? that's the question i always ask people yeah <laughs> like when i when i hear about this stuff like you know you'll you'll hear people be like oh i want to be in a serious band but i don't want to go tour and it's like well why yeah i don't i don't understand that component of it like you can't really be in a serious band if you're not yeah. going to go on the road you can't play chicago every night of the week no fuck no <laughs> why would you i mean yeah why and why would you want to you're just gonna bum people out if you're playing like yeah. you're gonna play chicago like seven times yeah. in a month <laughs> well dude that's that's like with this band i've i've like instituted somewhat of a rule where it's like we're not gonna play chicago more than x amount of times in a certain time frame yeah. and it's like every six months like i'm okay doing maybe three or four chicago shows but i don't really want to do more than that because yeah a people aren't going to come out that often let's be honest about it. they're just not going to come out eight times ten times a month to go see you like you've been yeah. playing every weekend you're just it's just, yeah it just doesn't work so so you guys have been going on the road what's it like being on the road that much obviously you've got a family you've got you've got life yeah to deal with so what's it like juggling that kind of road schedule with with 
home life? I mean, it, it, you know, it gets tough. You know, I mean, I miss my wife. I miss my daughter, you know. Like, you know, I also miss the recording studio too, you know. It's so it, get, it, gets, it gets hard sometimes. But, you know, I mean, my wife's super supportive and, you know, I don't it, – it's, it's just – it's easy it, – it's easier knowing that you can rely on everybody in your band, though, too. You know, it's like it's you know, it's like if I'm bummed out or something, you know, it's like my bros are there that have my back and vice yeah. versa, you know. So it's and it's like I know that I'm not doing all this for nothing to have like the rug pulled out from under me any moment because somebody's going to quit. You know, it's like we're a three piece and me and Justin, you know, writing all the tunes. So it's like. That part makes it a little bit easier, too. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense or not. No, it absolutely does. I mean, I think I've been in enough bands, not even remotely fucking close. I mean, you've been in, but uh, uh, enough to understand the different structures of, of what you have to deal with. And, and yeah, trust is a hard... and But trust in this context is a little bit different of a word. It's like you're trusting someone with, you know, your creativity. And you're trusting someone with, like... I want to do this and this yeah. is not an easy thing to go do. And it's hard to put yourself out there and yeah. your own stuff out there. And you have to like enable this person to be involved in that. And if you can't trust them to like be a part of it, yeah, like a real part of it, it's, it's really hard. I mean, that's one of the things I love about working with, you know, the guys I'm working with now, like I can trust them with what I'm doing. Like, like even on a musical level, yeah. I can trust them. I can be like, Look, I'm going to get weird sometimes. <laughs> I had this idea. I was talking to Dave about this last night. I had this idea that, like, we, we had finished recording everything, and then we decided, all right, yeah. we're going to put out what we got. This is before we ended up actually putting the, the song together with you. But I was like, dude, I got to put this weird guitar thing in, in this <laughs> one song. And, like, I came in here to do it. And I'm like, look, I'm going to come in. I'm going to crank my amp yeah. all the way up. And I'm going to do this really feedbacky, weird. It's not something that your average, like, pop punk guitar player would go do in the middle yeah. of a freaking song. And I just remember those guys, like, they're, Dave and Adam were here. And they let me do it. But while I'm doing it, they're like, <laughs> what the hell is he doing in there? I'm like, just give me a minute. Give me a hot minute to get this done. Yeah, like, we got me. it done. It was awesome. And they're like, dude, we didn't think it was happening, but whatever you did work, like, cool. I'm like, thank you for allowing me to like step in and inject that in there. But there's bands I've been in where people will be like, no, like right away. They're just be, uh, uh, you're not going to do that. No. <laughs> we, you know, I mean, it, it's tough too, because, you know, I do play in these other bands. So it's like, you know, I have to sat like, I have to like appropriate my time, you know, cause it's like, I got yep. a lot of stuff that I'm, that I'm doing a lot of things I'm trying to juggle. So you know, but a lot of guys do that now, right? Like a, a lot of guys juggle multiple bands that I you just, play in. And I think that's part of the nature of what we do now. I just like playing music, man. Yeah. And I like playing different music and I like playing with different people. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's like, you know, I always get all these jokes about like, oh, dude, like, you know, <laughs> what? But uh, Jenny ran into Kyle Kinane at Beat Kitchen this one night. Kyle's like, oh, hey, it's Mrs. I'm in a thousand bands <laughs> or whatever. And I'm just like, you know, it's like. You are known as that guy a but little bit, though. This so. is the thing, though. It's like, you know, I just like playing music and I like writing songs. and I like playing with different people, you know, mm -hmm. and I like staying busy, you know. So it's like, OK, you know, if one band's kind of part time, you know, this is kind of, you know, this and working at the studio is what I do, man. Yeah. So I'm not going to just sit around at home twiddling my thumbs i'm like all right well let's make some fucking music yeah you know i think i think you know probably one of the things that we share is a, a need to constantly be doing things yeah like i do other stuff like the record label and stuff like that you're doing the recording yeah and, like i'm not an engineer by any means <laughs> 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 i'm just like every time i'm there i'm like i don't know what's happening i had to have adam show me how to plug in two microphones <laughs> to do a podcast dude and i'm a nerd oh. and i couldn't figure this stuff out. i was like i don't know what's You're going like, where's on the here. studio magic button dude? <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> how do you make it sound <laughs> that's all i had to say <laughs> um mm. So you've been doing Million Yen for a while. Let's talk about that for a second. So what 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 got you started with engineering and doing Million Yen? Well, you know, my dad 
works and well used to work now worked in radio for my entire like my entire life my dad worked in that. radio and i can remember being like a kid was he a dj he or? was a dj yeah. then he was a program director and then he was an operations manager after that yeah. but i can remember being like a little kid and going to the radio station with my dad and like seeing like all the gear and just kind mm-hmm. of being fascinated with it and the first time i ever recorded with with a band like I was immediately interested in like what the process was and what yeah. was happening. And so it was something that I always, you know, that I really wanted to do. And so I went to school for it for a little bit. And then I started interning at a studio in Chicago, but it was, it was when you intern at places like that, I mean, you're there like 12, 13 hours a day, mm-hmm. you know, fucking scrubbing ashtrays and bullshit, you know, yeah. I mean, that's just what you have to do. But then, you know, at the end of the night, you know, one of the engineers will let you sit in on the session. You get to ask them questions and see shit, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I was doing that, I was I was just playing in the story so far, and my daughter was just born. And then I'm trying to hold down a full-time job, intern at a fucking studio, play in a band, and be a dad. And it was just something I had to give. And I was like, well, you know, I can always come back to engineering, but, you know, the time to play music is now. Yeah. You know, and it, it's like I always kind of figured it's like, you know, I, I think a dude's, you know, you know, it's like 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 Jay Robbins, for example. It's like, you know, you play in this band and people know you from this band and you start engineering. And so people want to come record with you because, you know, they they like your bands. Yeah. And then they know that you're going to get what they're trying to do. So I always kind of figured it was like, well, I'll push the music thing and then I'll just fall back on the engineering stuff. So. I just kind of put it out of my mind for a little bit because, you know, I mean, when you and I met, you know, I was helping with that Few and Far Between record and yep. stuff. And it was it was like right after that, I was just like, I, I can't, I don't have the time. I can't do it, you know. And so I would met Andy at Million Yen when um, Four Star Alarm was recording there and stuff. And Andy knew, you know, that I, that I knew, and, you know, knew how to at least operate shit mm-hmm. and stuff. And then he he just, you know, he, he kept asking me about it. He's like, look, man, you want to come here and work? You want to do this stuff? And, you know, my stipulation with, with stuff was is that, like, I can't be committed to something full-time because playing in the band is full-time right now. Yeah. You know, it's like, and, you know, Andy was really cool and encouraging about stuff. He's like, look, I just want to get you in here and have you do stuff, you know. You can do it on your schedule, man. Just, you know, would you got bands you want to record, bring them in, you know. If you don't record for a couple months, that's cool too. Just get in here, and I was, and it was like when that happened, I was like, "All right, I'm in." Mm-hmm. And it's, ironically, it's like the the studio stuff is taken. I don't not more of a precedent over playing in a band, but it's equal now. You know, it's like yeah. as soon as I got in there and got back into recording bands and just enjoying like the process and everything, it was like, "All right, well, this is taking a priority now too." You know. Yeah. And so that's so that's pretty much how it just happened. It was like really like by chance that I got back into it. Like I always wanted to come back to it, but I figured it would be like later in my life, you know. And I'm lucky I get to do both, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's always fun recording with you. Uh, <laughs> we always get at least a couple of Jeff Dean one-liners out of the process. <laughs> um, my favorites still are uh, the the kid from seized up who was like, can I just like uh punch the guitar slide in? I'm not going to be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down. One of my favorite ones. It's and a, then it's the, a pick slide, dude. Yeah. It's, hard, it's, it's hardcore. You don't punch, you don't punch pick slides. <laughs> dude, you just, you didn't miss a beat with that response. Either. It was just immediate. Like that was your response. It was already queued up in your head. Just came up perfectly naturally. <laughs> And then my other favorite one was when we did the Reese one. You want some dude mood? Dude mood. I love the dude. Yeah, you turn the lights down a little bit. <laughs> turn the lights down a little bit, dude. That was awesome. Well, you know, I I feel like I've you know I've only I've only been working at Million Yen since it was like December two thousand nine when I started working with Andy there, mm-hmm. and I I feel fortunate, man. I've gotten to d- it's work. a great room. That stu- the studio rules. I mean, yeah. I, I I loved that place right off the bat the first time I recorded there. The, He's got great gear, but the um, the the li- that big live room sounds fantastic you for get, drums. Yes, yes, sounds fucking great. That's the the immediately noticeable difference. Yeah, <laughs> in what the song we did versus the rest because Adam did it here, so it's yeah. all close mic'd. Yeah. Right? Everything was close, Mike. Whereas when we record with you, you get you get the big yeah, you got, big you got room. Sound. Yeah, you get the room mics, and you do all the crazy like 
I don't even know what you don't ask me, but there's like weird like, mics everywhere. <laughs> and I'm, the bathroom mic, all that stuff. I like big like, drums. I like drums. Need well, the, you should need like the sound Dave's big. Then, the dude. He no, like, I mean, but like big drum sounds. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. you want it to be big yeah. and live. You know. Yeah. It's like I don't know. I want to. I want to make records to where if I close my eyes, I feel like I can touch the band. That's how I want the record awesome. to sound. I want it to sound like well, it's, and you can it's feel there and it's, yeah. it's real. You, you can feel you know? that when you're recording with you. You definitely like to get takes. Yeah. Too. You like to get complete takes. For sure, especially on drums, yeah. guitar, bass. Like you, like you're not you're not as big on the punching in thing as a lot of guys well, that I've worked with. So well, you know, it's like. I mean, all this technology and everything's great, and it's rad that you have the ability to do yeah. and fix all these problems and make mm-hmm. things sound perfect and whatnot. Yeah. But it's like, to me, those are like problem solvers. Those aren't yeah. supposed to be what you the process. Yeah, yeah. It's like fuck that. Play your shit. And, yeah, and and let's get let's get a really good, awesome take. On and then if we have to fix something, that's okay. We got this. We can fix it. We but can, let's we not can adjust it. Let's not just be like, oh, let's we'll not do, make we'll, it part of how we yeah, actually go like, about recording. Oh, that's the good enough, man. You can just fix that later. It's like, well, yeah, but why don't we do it right? Yeah. You know. So the, I think the only note that's ATR on the record is actually from you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we, because we had to fix something. But I remember um, I came in here the last day. And Adam took a cue from like you yeah. and other dudes. He's like seen now, and he, he was before very big into like that, like. I'm going to ATR everything. I'm going to like pitch correct and I'm going to note correct and make sure everything's like lined up exactly right and all this stuff. But then when I came in, like we did the final listen to the album, mm-hmm. I was like, there was this one note where I was like, I mean, it's not, it's not terribly out of tune, but it was like just a little bit where I was like, can you fix it? He's like, dude, I haven't ATR to note on this record and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and I, I was like, I told him, I'm like, you kind of sound like Dean. <laughs> well, the, I was like, I've, I way, way rather have an awesome, spirited performance that's not exactly perfect, but yeah. has that fucking life to it. Well, and that's that, what it was. He th- took the best take. Yeah. I mean, it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to have this awesome, spirited performance. It might not be quite, like, pitch on, but it sounds great yeah. because it's real. Or do you have a lackluster performance that's pitch perfect? Yeah. It's like, and I'll people take- miss that so much. During that era, I think, of, like, the early 2000s when the ATR... And the technology really yeah. started to take over in recording. People lost that when you go see a band live, you hear all that stuff. Yeah. They don't sing it perfect yeah. every time. It doesn't happen. You go listen to any live recording and you hear that, the misses. But but the spirit of the thing is what gives it the great energy. You hear the great performers and you're like, even though he might have missed something, that dude can do it. Well, I like, I, I like that, especially when it comes to singing I like the strain to get to it. I don't want it to be like, boom, perfect. It's yeah. like, I like hearing somebody try to reach for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if it's like, it's almost there, but then the performance is so good. It's like, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. You know? Except when it's just not there at all. Like yeah. The backing vocals. We just... <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, there's more, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. <laughs> You oh, know? we were skinning cats that night for <laughs> yeah. sure. <laughs> Until Devin came by and saved us. Yeah, then so. he came in and killed it. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, we got a singer yeah, in here. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody was again. It was one of those things where everybody was looking at me like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "No, I'm calling Devin." That's right a good now. idea, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing it. We need somebody to come in. No, so, but I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I feel really fortunate with with the record. Some of the records I've gotten to work on since well, I you got just back did in. Sam I am right. I just, you just just remixed uh, Sam I am's whatever's got you down. It's and, awesome, dude. Yeah, like that band. To, and I think I've told you this story, but like my yeah. my story of seeing them was seeing them open up for Green Day. Yeah, four hundred people at the Seventh House in Pontiac, Michigan. Most insane show ever, and that's yeah. the first time I really ever I'd heard of them before that. But I'd never really paid attention to them before that. And I saw them at that show and I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. And and uh one of my favorite records by them though is, is not one of the ones that's more popularly available right now, is the one they did on some other record label. And it's got like She Found You. Oh yeah. Uh, no idea, just re release that. Right. Some um, whatchamacallit, uh You're freaking me out. Yes, you're yeah. freaking me out. That is one of my favorite like records. 
it's all, amazing. All the records Dude, are good, man. That, that record, though, to me has some just the, the songs on that record. Just yeah, or, or, uh, not ordinary. I'm thinking of face to face right now. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking of them because they played last night, and I keep hearing about it. But uh, it, 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 dude, that album just blows my mind. And well, they, I think they were touring partially on that album yeah. at that point as part of what it was. Well, so. I'm ex- I'm excited for people to hear this remix of this record because the ri- the original version of the record was kind of rough, you yeah. know, and I th- I think I did a pretty awesome job with this remix. I yeah. mean, well, I, I mean, mean, I heard pe- you play pe- some of it, dude. People it's are, not a badass. You know, so. I mean, the record label's stoked. The band dudes are stoked. And I, I think people, I mean, it sounds like a new record. I mean, yeah, I busted my balls on that thing. Well. <laughs> so, but I don't know, man. You know, it's like, like you know, I've, I got to record Jake Burns, man, who's like one of my all time favorite singer guitar players. You know, yeah. it's like, I don't know. It's like I've, I've gotten pretty lucky with the recording stuff. You know, it's like. A fucking um, Mike from Amusement Parks on Fire, his new band, Young Light, I did their record. And I mean, Amusement Parks on Fire is like one of my favorite bands, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's just weird how shit happens sometimes, you know what I mean? It's like... I played in a fucking band with Jesse from Op Ivy. I know how weird yeah. this shit gets yeah, dude. sometimes, dude. <laughs> Imagine... I, I was when I was talking to uh, uh, Pete earlier. I didn't I didn't bring it up, but I was thinking that, like, as he's talking about some of the stuff he ended up doing because he's playing with Ray Gun now. Yeah. And it's like... Dude, that that's insane! Like you're playing with a band that you grew up like listening to, you yeah. know. And as a recording engineer, to get to do that, and to me, seems like it would be even more personal because now you're responsible for actually like what's going to be put out to the public. Well, I remember when when I recorded when I recorded Jake. You know, I had I hadn't known him. We're, we're bros now. It's like we hang out and drink beers and stuff because mm-hmm. he lives in Chicago. Yeah, but like I didn't know him at the time, but I knew I was recording him. And being such a huge Stiff Little Fingers fan, I was like a little bit nervous, but he's such a rad dude. It was like immediately, I'm like, oh, this guy's yeah. great. But I just remember having this moment, like I'm at the board and, you know, he's, we're getting like vocal takes and kind of getting warmed up and, you know, start doing stuff. And I'm listening to it on the monitors and I'm like, it's like I'm listening to Stiff Little Fingers, yeah. but he's in the room dude, right I love, there. I, I was just like, they did, I'm, like uh, my, I'm like, this is just weird. What was that? Ch- <laughs> they might they might do it every year, right? They do like the uh, what is it? The nefarious oh, yeah. fat cats, yeah, or it, whatever. It's, it's awesome, awesome. dude. It's I, at Liars Club, it's like the yeah. best show of the year, easily. It's so much, so much fun. Like uh, the, dude, Thin Lizzy covers. Oh that stuff. my so god! Rad. Like the whole show. I remember I saw that maybe two two years ago or three years ago for the first time at Liars Club, and I was just like, oh my! And, and, and when I went, I didn't even know it was him. Yeah. Like, I had no idea. I just knew that it was, like, uh, uh, what is it, the the dudes from Pegboy, yeah. right? And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go up to Liars Club tonight to go check this out. And then it's fucking dude from Stiff Little Fingers yeah. up there. And I'm like, <laughs> where the hell am I right now? Like, I'm at Liars Club. <laughs> Are you serious? Like, <laughs> so rad. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's awesome, dude. So it, d- when did you do that with him? Oh, that was a couple of years ago now. Was that that ago. that Black Sheep record? Oh, because he yeah, sang a song yeah, on yeah. it. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. And then I, you know, I did some more recording for him. He, he he did a guitar solo for this band, the Mahones from, I think they're from Canada. Like he mm-hmm. did some guitar on the record. And I recorded that for him. That's kind of cool. So you yeah. did like just. So how does that work when like they've got a record and they need another part recorded. I mean, they'll just, send, just, the, they'll just send, send the session. Like They send the whole Pro Tools um, session or whatever? Usually it'll just be like a stereo mix of something, you know, but like the start and end times are got right. It. And then you just, re, I mean, you just record and then send the WAV files to them. So. Interesting. Huh. That's kind of cool. But yeah, actually, you know, it's funny. It's, um, I think my favorite record that I ever recorded was probably that Noise by Numbers record over Levitt. That, that's it's a badass record, dude. That's so we had so much fun. I mean, not just not because I played in the band, but like we had so much fun making that record. Yeah, like it was pr- the most fun I've ever had making a record. Was that record? Mm-hmm. It was such a good time. The noise by number records are awesome, dude. Thanks, I mean, dude. definitely like that combination. I think it's a great combination with like you and Dan. I really like you talked about earlier. You guys obviously connected on some level, yeah. but you're also your backgrounds are definitely different. Well, I think that's why it worked. You know what I mean? It's like, it was, it was cool because, you know, it was nice to get Dan out of his comfort zone of like just the pop punk stuff and try different things. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? It, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. 
but there's great riffs on those records and the melodies are still great and the lyrics and everything kind of it all fits together i really i i do enjoy those records a lot we, awesome. we do have we do have one more thing coming out because we're not we're we're not playing anymore. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so, aware, but, but you guys had other stuff you recorded, well, we, right? You did well, like... Well, we, we, we had seven songs, six or seven songs that we had... I remember you that telling we, me about this. That were like point. in the works for the next album, but... Yeah. So we just, we went and recorded them once, you know, mm-hmm. we kind of were like, all right, well, record the last song, so... Yeah. And that stuff's done. It just needs. It's getting mixed by John Drew up in yeah. Canada, so... He's not allowed in the United States yeah. anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole we didn't talk about, but we I don't think we have time. Um that story is hilarious, so not allowed in the United States. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hey, they kept a Canadian out. Hey. I, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's the, the little the little the, the little nice Canadian. They kept them they kept them out of the good old America. You're not coming here to work. No. It's not happening. Um, well, the funny thing was, is that we were coming back from a European tour too. We yeah. weren't even here. Yeah. <laughs> like he just had a layover in, in Chicago. We flew back to Chicago and then he had a flight back to Toronto and <laughs> they just uh, had enough I'm of like, him. <laughs> we weren't even in America, dude. We were in Europe. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, no, no more John Drew. Yeah. I met John through doing the, the remake of the, the, Few and far between records. Yeah, that's how I met John. It weird how that all connects sometimes in <laughs> yeah. this. Like being musicians, like you just meet people at the weirdest times. Uh, it all comes together. Um, but so, what does All Eyes West have coming up now? You guys are going on the road again. I saw um, recently. We have uh, Miguel's playing uh, drums for you guys. Yeah, he's filling in for, yeah. on drums for us right now. We 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 have what, seven sh- like a little Midwest tour with Great Apes, mm-hmm. and then. Hopefully we're going to start recording our new album finally. Yeah. So it's been it's been it's been <laughs> it, it's been a, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we've been touring so much; it's been hard to like get like songs together, you know. Yeah. And it's like we 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 finally have enough songs for the next album. So I think hopefully September we'll start recording it. You guys got it plan for releasing it or is it just kind of like you're figuring just, out as it goes? Yeah, or? just kind of one thing at a time for now, you know. Yeah. But it was like, all right, we got to kind of, you know, hit the brakes on touring a little bit so we can get this record done. <laughs> but I mean, hit the brakes on touring. What you're going to be home for a while? I know. <laughs> I need to. I need to record some bands, man. I need to work. I need to make some money. <laughs> That's awesome, though, dude. Well, thanks, man. I think uh, I think we've got over an hour easily <laughs> we, we bored it we bored everybody to death now well the, i think we kind of took off and like i knew this was gonna happen with you and i we didn't even cover everything but you yeah know, we could probably sit here and fucking <laughs> drink and talk for eight hours but you know this is good i love it dude so, awesome dude thanks for doing it man yeah I absolutely it, man so fun cool That was a great chat. Had a really, really good time hanging out with Jeff Dean. Uh, Everybody, go get your tickets for the World Apocalypse show. I will see you on Wednesday. Expect expectations because there's going to be a whole lot more than we're bargaining for. And I can't think straight because the gutter has got the best of my mind. That's why I'm in the different, I swear it. And I don't really care if it's out of our hands. Out of control Believe it or not I've been here before So a little shit right now Till my ego Will not my nose Is that what you wanna hear Take a deep breath And whoa My little spark of political buzz Is that what you wanna hear What you wanna hear Changing like the channels on a board TV, scramble static screen. I'm finding how to fix a grip on the handle. Use for opening doors and fall and door. To the basement at the bottom, we're facing cause my company is by my side. Do you